What if I told you vitamin C is not a real vitamin at all and was never part of the natural human diet? In fact, vitamin C cannot be used inside the body at all and must first be converted to another form of ascorbic acid, which is easily found in fresh meat. While I have heard some low-carb gurus say we don't need as much vitamin C on a low-carb diet because it does not have to compete with glucose for the GLUT4 transporter, in reality, the amount we need in the diet is zero. On the other hand, DHAA, or dehydroascorbic acid, not only is more absorbable than vitamin C, but also absorbs better than glucose itself. That's right. It absorbs from the intestine much more easily than glucose does. In fact, it's a thousand times more effective at absorbing into the bloodstream. It's also not true that we need vitamin C as an antioxidant, which is a job it does very poorly. Vitamin C can also cause oxidative damage, especially when taken in megadoses. The main antioxidant of the body is glutathione, which is found in people on a low-carb diet at twice the level as people on a standard American diet. So while you might think such a basic scientific topic would be solved a long time ago, as in other areas, it has been the subject of both obfuscation and quackery. By running a serpentine pattern, he's incapable of rapid course correction. Serpentine, everyone! Hey, Marshall! You ever get tired of being wrong? I do! I really do! I'm tired! Most people have no idea that DHAA even exists. DHAA is dehydroascorbic acid, not to be confused with the omega-3 fatty acid DHA, which is something totally different. This is the animal form of ascorbic acid, and it is thousands of times more absorbable than the form found in plants. In fact, it is even more absorbable by the gut than glucose, over a thousand times more absorbable. This fact used to be on Wikipedia for years, but at some point it mysteriously disappeared. Thankfully, I'd seen this years ago in textbooks and in studies, so at least one person wasn't fooled. Hmm, yes, and she's scrabbling around to get them back on again, but even before she can get her knickers on, I've seen everything. You know, I've seen it all. You would think that we have carefully measured the nutrition levels and foods to an exacting degree and monitored them over time. In reality, most nutritional values we re rely on for foods are from initial tests of the 30s and even earlier. At this time, all food was organic and it was grown in natural conditions with undepleted soil. Now there is not only depleted soil, but artificial conditions and extreme crowding. The same soil used to grow one carrot at that time can be used to grow 100 carrots today. Worse, fruits like blueberries are often grown in plastic mulch, and they're not even in dirt at all, and they're in totally unnatural lighting conditions. They're pumped with chemical fertilizers to make them grow, but they only get the bare minimum of other nutrients. So even if you ignore absorption issues with plant nutrients, the values we have today are highly misleading. Modern produce has little or no vitamin C or minerals, unless you grow it at home yourself. You'll probably get more nutrients from a single homegrown carrot than you would from eating a whole bag every week at the local grocery store, whether it's organic or not. And in reality, you probably get more from one carrot than you would from half a dozen bags of carrots from the grocery store. Ascorbic acid, or vitamin C, is produced by plants and most animals within the mitochondria themselves. Not in humans, however. This may seem odd, but the human diet before agriculture is shown by bone isotope analysis to be nearly 100% meat. 
Since Napoleonic times, it has been known that fresh meat could cure scurvy, but what they did not know was that meat was full of dehydroscorbic acid, or DHAA. Surprisingly, this molecule has been little studied in nutritional science until recent years, and none of the nutritional tests available at the time would have been able to detect DHAA anyway. Inside the mitochondria, ascorbic acid can be part of the neutralization of reactive oxygen species, but for humans the main use is for collagen production. A small amount of ascorbic acid is required for one of the enzymes, which is needed for collagen synthesis. But DHAA is the only way to get this into the body, both efficiently and safely. Glutathione and superoxide dismutase are the human body's main antioxidants. These are very stable antioxidants, which is important. If they're unstable, then you can actually overreduce chemical substances, which is just as bad as not having enough antioxidants in your system. Sadly, this is not true for ascorbic acid. You can definitely have too much vitamin C, and if you are taking a supplement, then you probably do have too much. In fact, vitamin C is simply not a significant part of our ancestral diet. DHAA is thousands of times more absorbable than vitamin C, and only DHAA can pass through the blood-brain barrier or penetrate the cell membrane or enter the mitochondria. Antioxidants are important, but ascorbic acid is not the only way to increase them, not even in the form of DHAA, which is also something you would not want to take in large amounts as a supplement. Not only is it more reactive and therefore potentially damaging, but also much less effective than glutathione and the body's other natural mechanisms for neutralizing reactive oxygen species. This includes L-cysteine, AKG, taurine, glycine, and many other ways in which antioxidant mechanisms can be indirectly stimulated. And this is actually the main reason that humans live so much longer than animals because we're much better at cleaning up all these reactive oxygen species. Now some of you may feel like you've seen this video before because you have seen an older version of it. One of the reasons I'm remaking it is I wanted to address the idea that you could have too much glutathione. This is definitely not true and this bizarre notion has been going around on the net lately for some reason. The only reason this could happen is if you injected it directly into your body, but when you take supplements like NAC or better yet L-cysteine, or if you take glycine which is also needed to create glutathione, all you're doing is providing the resources to build it. It's only produced at need and the body will never produce too much. It's also very stable unlike vitamin C, so it's not going to just go around rampaging through your body, destroying things, unlike what some people are saying for some reason. Keep this in mind when I tell you that people on a low-carb diet are shown to have double the glutathione as people on a standard American diet. This is because methionine, heavy in meat and lacking in the standard American diet, and almost absent in the vegan diet, is what's required to produce glutathione and without it, you will always have a very poor antioxidant status in the body. And this is very bad because that's what makes you live longer than animals do because they don't have a very good antioxidant status in their bodies. And it's also good to supplement these because it stops your body from using the methionine directly and that way no homocysteine is created. And that's not a real problem if you're in good metabolic health but if you have bad metabolic health of unhealthy liver, then you're going to have trouble detoxifying all of this homocysteine. And I've talked about that in many other videos, but it's important to realize just how important glutathione is in the body if you want to be remotely healthy. If we eat right, humans actually have a much, much better antioxidant system than any animal on earth. We're also able to recycle our ascorbic acid, which is something only humans and pigs can do. This is why we simply don't need much ascorbic acid and only a few milligrams per day for collagen synthesis. And we can reuse this over and over again, so we don't even need that on a daily basis. 
That brings me to the next piece of nonsense to dispel. That eating collagen means you don't need ascorbic acid. Every day, new nonsense like this comes up. So I guess I will always have a reason to make new videos. While this might seem logical on the surface, collagen cannot be absorbed by the gut until it's broken down into its constituent pieces. When the body reassembles them, this requires ascorbic acid, which can be produced from dehydroascorbic acid. And it's actually pretty hard for the body to break down collagen. So simply taking a collagen supplement is not a great solution and I don't recommend anyone ever takes a collagen supplement. Especially since most collagen is contaminated with glyphosate, even if it's organic. Beef is better than pork or chicken, but even organic grass-fed beef can be contaminated because it's basically in the water supply everywhere. A much better solution for those who want to produce more collagen is to take glycine, which is also needed to create glutathione. It's going to do a much better job at creating collagen and it's going to help you create glutathione as well and it does many other things in the body which i've talked about in previous videos it's either that or boil a whole chicken every day for broth which is the only other way you're going to get as much glycine as our ancestors would have had just 100 years ago on long sea voyages sailors would get scurvy this eventually was stopped by randomly assigning various food rations British naval ships until one was found that addressed the problem. And that turned out to be limes. That is why the English are sometimes called limeys, though you don't really hear that much today. That is what has propagated the myth that humans need vitamin C from plants. But this is not true. Bitterly, there was no citrus in England. And in fact, there's very little of anything that was growing in England at that time that contained significant amounts of vitamin C. Even in those times, long after the discovery of agriculture, no one in northern climes had a significant dietary intake of ascorbic acid, let alone in the endless eons before the discovery of agriculture. In those times, our ancestors ate very close to 100% meat, and they also ate the organs, the skin, and the bones. The real issue was what they ate on the long sea voyages. Salted pork was the common food of the peasant folk in America and the British Isles during the Age of Sail. This was typically made once a year just before winter, which means it had a limited shelf life, especially if the voyage started well after this time of the year. The other food ration was hardtack, double-baked crackers that can essentially last forever if they're kept dry. They're basically like really big saltines. If you go without ascorbic acid for just a few weeks, you start to get scurvy. Since it was only after months that sea this became an issue, it begs the question where this was coming from in the first place. There's zero ascorbic acid in hardtack, which is made of dried and ground wheat. The only other place it could come from is the pork, which was the only source of ascorbic acid for this men in the form of DHAA. The problem with the salt pork was that there was no canning like today, so it eventually went rancid. Oftentimes it was close to rancid before the ship even left the port, depending on the time of year and how honest the merchants were. It would also often run out on very long voyages. This means they were relying entirely on grain for their sustenance, which is a highly deficient food source. If you eat nothing but grains like wheat, you will die very quickly. This is why it is highly fortified in modern times. Conditions like beriberi are common for those eating large amounts of rice and white flour because they deplete V vitamins in the body. And even if you have them fresh and whole ground, you still have this problem just to a lesser degree. And while those things will kill you, if that's all that you eat, it's actually going to be the scurvy that kills you the quickest. So while this issue is often blamed on lack of plant foods during these long voyages, in reality it is due to reliance on starch as a cheap energy source and the inability of the time to properly preserve meat. Animal meat of all kinds is simply full of DHAA and due to soil depletion and modern growing practices such as selling unripe fruit, 
It probably has a lot more than the apples you buy at the corner store. This is also the only form of ascorbic acid the body can properly absorb and easily use. While the glucose transporters prefer glucose to the plant form of ascorbic acid, they actually prefer DHAA over glucose by a factor of over 1000. Perhaps the GLUT4 transporters should be renamed the DHAA transporter since clearly this is its main purpose. It amazes me this information is never spoken of even by low carb diet advocates, even though it can be easily looked up in textbooks, even if it does appear to have been redacted from Wikipedia at some point. We live in a world not only of carefully crafted lies and manipulation, but also shocking apathy, lack of curiosity, and a stunning lack of educational rigor. When I went to school, I strived to be the best and the dropout rate in my undergrad program was over 90%. Some of the classes I took had a similar dropout rate, and that's just the class itself, not the program. If you made it through though, you knew you would really accomplish something. Champ. That's short for champion. Vitamin C is promoted to us heavily, but we don't really need it. While there is a long list of purported benefits for vitamin C, in reality, these are just benefits of antioxidants in general. Vitamin C is an antioxidant, but it's a very poor one, a very hard to absorb one, and it's too reactive, which means it can actually damage your body. DHAA in meat is far more absorbable, and there's more than enough in even small cuts of meat to prevent scurvy. In fact, it is probably a better source of ascorbic acid than fruits grown using modern methods in depleted soil. The real way to improve your antioxidant status is through consuming animal products, which are full of methionine needed to make it. This is why those on a low carb diet have twice the glutathione as those on a standard American diet. Supplementing L-cysteine and glycine can get the levels even higher, but the body will never overproduce glutathione and cause problems as the quacks have claimed lately and glutathione is also much more stable, so it's just not going to have that issue much anyway. If you've ever wondered why people don't die on a carnivore diet, this is the reason why. Like fasting, not only does eating meat not kill you, but it has some amazing health benefits for the body. 